a champion father, championship fathering, and being a courageous father. If you've not seen the movie Courageous, had our church been set up with screens and televisions, I had, I had thought about trying to get people to bring a big screen TV or renting one and showing the movie Courageous tonight. But our church is just not set up for that kind of media yet. Our new church will be set up. But if you've not seen the movie Courageous, you need to get that movie. It is an incredible, incredible story for dads to watch. But even if you're not a dad, you'll like that movie. So I encourage you to watch that movie. Joshua chapter 24. Let me begin reading at verse number 14. <clears throat> and now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and serve Him in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. <clears throat> verse 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Listen to this last statement. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to preach the gospel. You are a good God and I just can't thank you enough. Truly, I can't praise you enough for what you're doing in the rising and falling church of God. And I pray your blessings to be upon us now. I pray God that you touch the men of our church. Not only the men, but I pray that the ladies will be blessed as well by this service. And we pray God that you raise up championship fathers. Raise up championship mothers, God, that will be men and women of integrity. I pray that you bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let me ask you this question. What is one word that describes your father? One word that describes your father. And then answer this next question to yourself. Why? One word. Now listen, it could be a father that was present or absent. It might be a, a father, you might use the word involved or disengaged. You might use the word loving or apathetic. <coughs> but you need to understand, fathers, in this room today, you leave an incredible mark on your children. Do not take the job of a father half-heartedly. In America, we're growing into a place of chaos, if I can just be honest, because of the absentee father. One third of children live apart from their biological father. Twenty million children live a life with no father or a father figure. And it is causing chaos in our country. Listen to this. Forty percent of the children being born today are being born to single moms without a dad. The structure of the Bible is for man to be active and involved in a child's life. It is important that there are dads that will rise up to teach young men and young women how to be good young men and good young women. There's a crisis in America, and believe it or not, it affects every part of us. And I want you to make sure that you listen today because I'm going to give you three keys according to... Uh, according to research, that all men must have, all father, fathers, in order to affect your child, in order to positively influence your child, you need these three things. Number one, you need love. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. It says, And lo, a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> in that verse... God is basically saying, look, this is a son that I love. This is a son that I am well pleased with. We must understand that we must love our children. We must be men that are not afraid to show your emotions and to show your support and to show your love to your kids. They need to see that. Yeah. First of all, how do you love your child? Number one, you love by responding to their needs. Respond to their needs. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to spend time with them. Don't be afraid to touch them, hug them, kiss them, pat them on the back. And then, listen to this, don't be afraid to talk to them. Your kid needs to know whether your child is my, my kid's age or whether they're 45 or 50 years old today, it doesn't matter. Your child will know you love them because you spend time with them, because you talk with them, because you touch them, because you are willing to meet their needs. Secondly, your behaviors will show your love. How do you encourage them? Are you affirming their, their, their life? Are you affirming their actions? Are you listening to them? Dads, let me encourage you. Make sure you're willing to listen. And then next, 
team up, team up with your wife or your child's mother. It is important that there is a team to raise your child. A mama shouldn't do it by itself. A dad shouldn't do it by himself. It should be a, a mutual respect between the mom and the dad to help be able to raise that child. They need to see a positive teamwork. And this leads to this. Listen, you need to discuss how you're going to raise your kids. Talk about it. Me and Amy, we have different views at times. It's important that we speak about those views to each other. How is it going to work? Is it age appropriate? Let's get together, have teamwork, and then strive to be in a positive relationship with your wife. They need to see a positive relationship. You need to understand a hard relationship with your wife will cause hard relationship with your children. Yep. It's amazing at how many kids are at the blunt of your aggravation with your wife. Wow. Y'all are real quiet. I, listen, this ain't a message to shout on, so I understand. But how many of you have lived through this? I'll raise my hand first. That you are stressed out because of work. You and your wife are not happy. Y'all are stressed out. Y'all are arguing over finances. And then little Johnny comes up and spouts off. And you go crazy on Johnny like it's his fault. And it's not little Johnny's fault at all. That you and your wife are in a bad relationship. So it is important that you work on having the most positive relationship with your spouse because your kids need to know what a good relationship looks like. Right. Yeah. How in the world will they ever know what kind of man or what kind of woman to marry if they don't see that in you? Mm -hmm. Let them see you love your wife or love your husband. Let them see a mom and a dad that are unafraid to hold hands or, or put your arm on that kind of person. That's all right, but your kids need to know that it's all right to love to show love to your spouse. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to discuss marriage with them. <laughs> Talk about it. Who else is going to teach them on marriage? Not the government. Not public education. They say it's alright to marry any kind and anywhere. That's not the truth. Amen. The Church of God put out a, a, a declaration uh, just about two, maybe three weeks ago <laughs> saying here's the stance of the Church of God. We believe marriage is defined between a man and a woman and a man and a and the only. Right. That is the church of God stands on there. Yeah. It is important that you discuss the importance of marriage, the reason to get married, and the reasons not to get married with your children. Amen? Amen. I tell Sadie when she starts saying, I want to get married and have five kids, I'll say, don't get married, baby. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright? Talk about them. Let them hear that conversation. You teach them. Amen? Amen? And then listen, men. Respect your child's mother. Oh, y'all are so quiet. <laughs> respect your child's mother. If they see you cussing your wife, they'll cuss every woman from now on. Amen. Amen. If they see you treating your wife by hitting her and slapping her, they learn, dads, that it's all right to hit and to slap women. You must be a role model and show them the right way to grow up and to love a wife and to love a mom and to have a healthy home relationship. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes. So let me ask you these four questions real quick. How often do you praise your children? Listen, that's a hard one for me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm one of those people that by nature, I see problems and want to fix them. I very seldom see things that are right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like that in the room? Mm -hmm. How often do you express affection verbally to your children? How often do you say, I love you? I know about grown kids too, not just little kids. How often do they hear you say, I love you? How often do you hug them and pat them on the back? Now look, i got a 14-year-old, a 15 rather, almost 16. He doesn't want me to hug him. I understand that. All right? I got a little girl that loves for me to hug and carry. But you know what? I'm 40 a bunch years old, and you know what? I just find a bit. <laughs> I don't mind a bit to hug my dad when I see him. Right. I won't before I leave, I want to hug my dad. When I see him, I want to embrace him. All right? It's important that your kids see that. Secondly, it's called coaching. Coaching is a lifelong process of shaping your kid's character. You shape your kid's character. Well, I don't know why my kids are the way they are. Really? Oh, yeah. Everybody breathe. Y'all y'all holding your breath. Every inhale. Exhale. Some of them are natural born instincts, but you shape the way those kids behave. Right. Yes. Y'all are so funny today. Everybody's trying to look at little babies. Everybody there's one right in my house, Thank you, brother Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you shape your kids. You shape your kids. Listen, 
and the process is different. And, and, and Satan's angel, I say, no, Satan, don't touch that hot oven. No, Satan, don't put your hand on the grill. Stop. With Madison, I have to say, here's why you don't do this. And I, I won't ever forget this. And it's been, it seemed like it happened yesterday. And it happened about four years ago. I was standing with a church member of mine at the last church I pastored. She told her daughter, I don't, don't go outside or something. And with an honest, easy, sweet, respectful thing, the little girl said, but why, Mama? The mama never answered, but the girl didn't get a spanking. The mama snatched her up and beat her. Didn't beat her, but spanked her pretty good and said, don't ask me why. If I tell you, you just do it. But let me tell you something. Your children need to know why sometimes. Yes. I know we love to say this because I said so. <laughs> but your kids are going to reach a place in life. They need to hear why. Here's all the mama had to do. Well, baby, you've been sick. And if you go outside, you'll get sick again. And the, the, the little girl probably, from just being around the little girl, would have said, okay. She just wanted to know why. All the other kids in the church were outside playing. She just needed an answer. Why can't I play? Hmm. Sometimes your kids, all of us need to know why. Don't be afraid. That's how the coaching process works. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says this. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart. Everybody say, when he is old. When he is old. When he is old. I want to encourage some of your parents right now that your kids are grown but not in church. The Bible says if you train them upright, when he is old, when he's young, he may stray. But there's something inside of him drawing him back to Calvary. And you need to understand you've got a promise in the Bible that says when he is old, he will not depart. So if you're a mama and you're worried about your children and they're not saved yet, you need to say, he's not old yet, but when he's old, he will give his life to Jesus Christ. He will serve the Lord. He will live for the Lord. He will go to heaven because I've trained him and I've coached him how to live for Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Coaching involves, in, uh, involves investment. You've got to invest your time in your children. Be active in their education. Play and work on projects together. I know, listen, who wants to help make a poster? I know some of you mamas are all, uh, you know, body do good. But uh, who really wants to make another science project? Dear Lord, I didn't like making them when I was in sixth grade. Ain't nobody's going to say amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christy and, and, and April are like, hush talking about that stuff. Yeah. Hey, aren't, aren't science projects a big waste of time? No. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Other than one person, science projects are a big waste of time. Here's why. I did a science project, and, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a com confessing this to whoever's watching around the world on YouTube. I did the same one three years in a row, and I never did it the first time. I got it from Paul who did it, who got it from William who did it, who got it from somebody else who did it. I just changed the back bird board and changed the index cards and put it on there. And I made it out of every time that <laughs> every time that project made it out of the district, made it into the finals. I mean, we got blue ribbons. All of us did. Praise God. <laughs> now that's wrong. Don't you kids do that? All right. Which leads me to this point. Sometimes it's easier to say stuff than it is to show stuff. But it's more important that you show stuff. All right? The science project is not what's important, but here's what's important. You're spending time with your dad while making that science project. Right. You're spending time with your mama while putting that tape around that border to make it look pretty. Yeah, y'all, I'd have offended all kind of educators today. Praise God, I used to be one of those. And I understand it is such a waste of time. And then you got to figure out how to grade and everybody gets a 95. You know what I mean? It's, it's All right, let me move on. <laughs> Show insight. Show insight. Listen, it's important to know your kids' talents. Yeah. It's important for you to know their likes and their dislikes. I understand. I'm going to use my son since my other kids are downstairs. I know my son is talented. He's a talented musician. He's a talented magician. All right? He's a talented actor. It's important that I try to do some things that supports that at the same time while making him stay balanced. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's just no air in this room, is it? <laughs> I know my son is great at some stuff, but it's my job as a parent to support, but to say, look, like he, he, he'd do 16 plays a year. My dad called last night. He said, where's Madison? I said, he's at a play, and believe it or not, he's not in the play. He's just at a play. 
If he could have figured out a way to do 16 plays at one time, he would. But it's my job to go, this is your talent, but let me try to keep you balanced in life. Parents, if we have to try to be the measuring scale to keep our kids on the right plane to be able to get them where they need to go. Amen. 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 But it's my responsibility to notice that he is gifted in this stuff and not to force him into something he's not gifted in. Right. Right. Amen? Amen. It's important that you begin to show them that. Next, show how their needs change with time. Madison's needs are not the same they were when he was four. When he's 16 next, in the next few months and he's driving, his needs are even going to be different. When he's 21 or 42 or 43, his needs are even going to be different. But as long as I'm his parent, I should try to be there to help guide him through the needs that he's coming up in his life. Listen, parents, you can't... Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus, to be nice. You cannot treat every child the same all their life. Right. If you've got three kids like I do, then guess what? One child likes this, one child likes this, one child likes that, one child responds to this, one child responds to that. You cannot treat all three kids the same way. Amen. They're individuals. You've got to invest enough in them to where you know their likes, you know their dislikes, you know what kind of discipline to use. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. <laughs> and then know that it changes over time. But let me tell you something. When I call my mom... I call my mom to get advice. I call my dad to get advice. I want their input. My needs are a lot different now that I'm a grown man with my own kids than they were when I was a teenager. So you have to adjust. Mm -hmm. And then continue to build that insight. And last, modeling. The third thing you have to do is model. John chapter 5 verse 19. John chapter 5 verse 19 says this. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But listen, but what he sees the Father do. Mm -hmm. right. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth his Son likewise. It's all about what he sees you doing. Modeling is about a living example daily. You know, I was kidding a minute ago about the science project, and I said, it is important that they don't just hear me, but they see me wow. in action. You've heard this expression for years, action speaks louder than words. Wow. Yes. Modeling is about how you live your life in front of them. They need to, you know what? They're going to learn how to handle money because you handled it well. Mm-hmm. Uh -oh. Oh, no. oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> They're going to learn how to treat people right by, based on how you treat people. They're going to see how you respond to dilemmas, and they're going to respond to dilemmas that way. You've heard the old, you know the, the scenario of the cycle of abuse? You know that I used to teach a life skills class, and you know what I realized? Sally talks back to you, you slap Sally in the face. Sally grows up and promises I'll never hit my kids. The first time her child backs talk, guess what Sally does? She slaps. Because that's what she learned to do. Oh, and then you hear this, I thought I would never do that in my life. I'm being just like my dad. Because they learned it from you. Do you know Madison's got a little girlfriend and he's now very embarrassed and mad that I'm talking about this girl? And uh, <laughs> happy Father's Day. That's what fathers get to do. You know, Madison wouldn't bring the girl around for months. And we were like, what's the problem? She ugly? She fat? Well, I mean, what's wrong with her? <laughs> He's like, no, you will embarrass me in front of her. Well, yeah, that's what we do. That's what dads do. Dads. That's our job. <laughs> But what's important about this little girl is that my son will see through my actions how to help and move in relationships. And the thing is this, I have to be consistent in what I do and consistent in what I say. It is important that I am consistent day by day. Does your child know what to expect around you? Are you one way one minute and one way another minute? They don't know if they're going to get a tornado, if they're going to get a hurricane, if they're going to get what? How are you? Are you consistent in your modeling? Let them see that. Let them see the consistency. Let them see how to handle crisis. Set a good example. 
Model and discuss spiritual and moral values. Mm -hmm. Model and discuss spiritual and moral values. Right. They need to know what to believe. Mm -hmm. They need to know why they believe what they believe. They need to know that it's wrong to have sex outside of marriage. Yes. Yes. They need to know it's wrong that it's wrong to hop from one bed to the next bed to the next bed to the next house with us, woman, this woman, that woman, this girl, this man. This. They need to know that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You've got to teach them that. Sitcoms are not teaching that. Mm -hmm. Law and order is not going to teach that. Even swamp people are not going to teach that. <laughs> All right? They learn that from you because the value system of the world is not the value system of the church. Right. You must set the right example to show them how to live their life. Right. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Let me encourage you. James chapter 1 verse 27 says this, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers, the widows, to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Listen to Psalm 68 verse 5 says, A father of the fathers and a judge of the widows is God in His holy habitation. Yeah. Now let me, why did I say that? Because I, I read your statement a little while ago that over 20 million people are growing up without fathers. Right. But it ain't my responsibility. Jesus says it mm -hmm. is. Yes. The Bible says you're to be a father to the fathers. Yes. You're to be a mentor to those who don't have a dad around. You're to be the, that house doesn't have a man in it. You become a godly figure in that kid's life. If there's kids in this church and they don't have a dad in their homes and they don't know what a godly man looks like, they need to see a godly man in you. Yes. Amen? Amen. It's important that you begin to support the fathers. It is your responsibility. As men, we have a responsibility to help the orphans. We need to do that. We need to show how much we care, how much we love. How else will they ever know what it's like? You know one of the best things I liked about being a school teacher? Was I got to make contact with kids and make a difference in their lives. And listen, I'll be honest, at times I didn't think it ever worked. But years down the road, I would know, oh, I did make a difference. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we all should take that responsibility to be a father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you today. There's a lot of dads that are not here. I want to encourage you to <clears throat> pass the word along. Tell fathers, we, we need to enlist other dads. We need to make sure we, we, we are dads that are champions for fatherhood. We are courageous dads and are afraid to stand up for what we believe in. We are dads that will be strong, healthy, holy, righteous dads. I want to ask you men something this morning. I wonder if you'd make a commitment with me this morning. Will you make a pledge with me this morning to be a champion father? Will you make a pledge with me this morning to stand and be a righteous father? Will you make a, a solemn promise to take your responsibility heavy, not light? I have copied off the, the pledge that the men in the, in the movie Courageous took. I want to read it to you. And then I want to ask you fathers, those of you who will take this seriously, to come and, and to stand before the church and to take this commitment. Here's the pledge you as fathers should take. I do solemnly resolve before God to take full responsibility for myself, my wife, and my children. I will love them, protect them, serve them, and I will teach them the Word of God as a spiritual leader in my home. I will be faithful to my wife. I will love and honor her. I will, I will be willing to lay my, down my life for her as Jesus Christ died for me. I will bless my children and I will teach them to love God with all their hearts, with all their minds, with all their strength. I will train them to honor authority and to live responsible. I will confront evil. I will pursue justice. And I will love mercy. I will pray for others and treat them with kindness, respect, and compassion. I will work diligently to provide for the needs of my family. I will forgive those who have wronged me and I will reconcile with those I have wronged. I will learn from my mistakes. I will repent of my sins and I will walk with integrity as a man who answers to God. I will seek to honor God, be faithful to His church, obey His word, and do His will. I will courageously walk and work with the strength of God 
and as it provides to fulfill this resolution for the rest of my life and for his glory. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This morning, I want every father who's willing to make that commitment to come stand with me in this front. Every father, you're willing to say, I promise.